Witch balls have been very popular since the 18th century, first in England, then in New England, but their actual origin is considered to be much older. For well over three centuries, hollow glass spheres have been hung in windows to ward off evil spirits and ill fortune. Hanging these decorative balls in the window or on the porch is thought to tantalize mischievous spirits, which may be threatening a home's tranquility. The wayward spirit is mesmerized by the ball's reflective beauty, and when the spirit touches the sphere, it's absorbed and trapped inside the ball. Initially, the witch ball was a decorative object. Its earliest predecessors were plates of round, colored glass placed around the garden. This marks the beginning of the witch ball as a garden ornament, its main use in continental Europe. German and Austrian versions, sometimes simply called Kugel, were commercially blown from the 1840s onwards and placed on wire poles, driven into flower beds, or set atop walls and fences. In some parts of Britain, these imports can still be seen. American witch balls, which date to the mid-19th century, were placed upon flared, rimmed vessels such as pitchers and jars to keep the insects out. Witch balls became immensely popular in the 1930s. They were sold in well-to-do boutiques and were common features in women's magazines. Some people planted their witch balls to make terrariums. Others filled them with rocks, glass beads, and water to create shimmering light effects. They also started attracting the attention of artists around this time. H.D. Richter exhibited the Silver Witch Ball at the Royal Academy in 1929, while a few years later, M.C. Escher's experimentations with witch balls, perspective, and self-portraiture elevated the witch ball to the category of fine art. Olive Nadell, an actress, and her husband were pictured in a magazine with a dark green witch ball sent to Mr. Nadell by a gypsy youth whom he had befriended. For a particular class of well-to-do consumer then, these balls were a material expression of their thrilling transactions with those in the, on the occult margins of society. The oldest example of a witch ball that makes explicit reference to its magical protective properties is in the National Museum of Ireland circa 1800. A sapphire blue glass witch ball to be suspended from ceilings and used to ward off evil spirits at negative entities. As mentioned, balls were usually placed at liminal points within the home, such as windows or doorways, areas that in times past were guarded by witch bottles, daisy wheel marks, or other apotropaic devices. The hollow transparency of witch balls is important as their evil averting function is dependent in some cases upon their contents. An explanation of the contents inside the witch ball is offered by modern folklore. Evil spirits attracted to the shiny surface of the ball became mesmerized by the reflection and upon touching it are caught and imprisoned by the items inside. Edward Lovett, an early 20th century banker, collector, and folklorist, reported that witch balls were a common feature in Italy, France, and Constantinople, where they hung as big as footballs outside of pharmacies. Remarkably, a witch ball did indeed hang from a light fitting in front of the Chapel of the Twelve Apostles in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem from 1898 to 1946. The Church of St. Hilary's in South Cornwall also boasted a witch ball, six in fact. In 1932, W. Pointer Adams visited the church and to his surprise saw six large silvered glass balls hanging between the arches in the chancel. Pointer Adams was told by a parishioner that these reflective objects were in fact demon watchers intended to ward off evil spirits from the reserve sacrament. Given the belief in their evil averting properties, it is perhaps unsurprising that witch balls alongside their spherical cousins, crystal balls, were found to be hanging in clairvoyance parlors and fortune tellers booths throughout the 20th century. The Museum of Witchcraft and Magic recently acquired photographs from Norelle Sharp, whose grandmother owned a witch ball together with a convex mirror. The items were used by Norelle's grandmother in an Eltham china shop after World War II where she read tea leaves. This modern use of witch balls is intriguing given the context of Tessiomancy. Another witch ball was used by Madame Montague Lawrence who was fined 10 pounds for professing to tell fortunes in 1943. Her shop in Sloan Square, Chelsea, was decked out with two crystal balls, which she handled during consultations, and what witnesses described as a silver bowl on a wooden stand. In an attempt to avoid a guilty verdict, Lawrence claimed that her crystals were only paperweights, and the large silver object only a witch ball, probably a garden globe or a kugel brought inside to act as a witch ball. 
The creators at Amara B have designed an entire line of witch balls, originally producing designs in two and a half inch diameter, and eventually producing our current selection of various sizes. We currently offer almost a half a dozen witch ball designs in four different sizes. Our witch balls are blown spherically round and include numerous herbs and minerals pertaining to the specific goal of the ball itself, be it protection, blessings, divination, love, etc. For more information and to view our current selections offered, check out the witch ball page on our website, amarabee.com, or click the link in the description box. Let the magic of our witch balls protect your home.